My story came to the attention of the nation this past September when the media reported that an Oregon judge was charged with ethics violations because he had recused himself from performing same-sex marriages based upon his Christian faith. Now, there are many duties that a circuit court judge has to attend to in Oregon, but one of them is not performing weddings. In Oregon, a judge may perform a wedding, but they are not required to do so. The alleged ethics violations went beyond same-sex marriage, though. They attacked me because I had exhibited my patriotism, how I expressed myself, and who I should associate with, and when I should associate with those people. They struck at my liberty. In doing so, they sought to establish bureaucratic preeminence over judicial independence. I have to tell you, um, the assault was aggressive, it was demeaning, and frankly hell-bent on assassinating my reputation. Those who sought my downfall wanted a public shaming so intense that no other judge would ever express a political or religious perspective contrary to the political correct elites in position of power. The personal assault was nearly overwhelming. So is it really okay in America today to bankrupt a public official who silently and respectfully chose not to participate in same-sex marriage? Is it really okay to drag a duly elected judge through months of litigation and a two-week hearing simply because he acted as a good Samaritan and sought to help a veteran in need? Is it okay to disparage his reputation because he hung patriotic wall hangings in a courthouse in an attempt to honor those who sacrificed their lives that we might live in freedom? Some of those who oppose my expression of liberty once sought tolerance for their own perspective, tolerance that was given. Now that the Supreme Court has decreed that the definition of marriage has changed, the request for tolerance from those who hold to natural marriage are met with immediate denial and a demand for compliance, utter compliance. Over the past few months, I've been called a bigot, a homophobe, a religious zealot, among many other things, all in an attempt to disenfranchise me from expressing my perspective in the public square. Similar to anti-communist crusaders in power in the 1950s, the new McCarthyites and having gained some power in the government bureaucracy, are using their power to deny voice to those who disagree with them. If you disagree with me, fine. If you think that judges give up their right to express their opinion simply because they are members of the judiciary, then make your argument. If you feel that judicial independence should be sacrificed on the altar of political correctness, then marshal your facts. If you feel that the First Amendment does not protect the religious liberties of a judge, then state your, your case as to why. On each issue, make the best darn arguments you can, but don't seek to bludgeon me by name calling, public shaming, and character assassination. Do not use the power of government to disenfranchise me because your worldview holds that public officials should be cleansed of any religious perspective. Perhaps this short speech is my shot across the Lexington Green. Why? Because I have a duty to discharge. We all have a duty to discharge. That duty is to those who came before us. And in the words of Thomas Paine, tyranny, like hell, is not easily conquered. Yet, we have this consolation with us, that the harder the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. What we obtain too cheaply, we esteem too lightly. Tis dearness only that gives everything its value. Heaven knows how to put a price upon its goods. 
and would be strange indeed if so celestial an article of freedom should not be highly rated. Those who expect to reap the blessings of freedom must, like men, undergo the fatigue of supporting it. My ancestors met stiff opposition when they came to the Oregon country in 1845. The terrain, hostile weather, British fur trappers, tragic accidents, sickness, death. But they did not shrink back from the hardships. They engaged the opposition in whatever form it took and chiseled out communities in harsh frontier lands. They became territorial legislators, county judges, postmasters, miners, and community leaders. They exercised their natural right to pursue life, liberty, and happiness without government interference. By their actions, they left us a legacy to follow in the cause of liberty. It is as if we are standing in the presence of the past, as if a great cloud of witnesses watches from a different realm, wondering if we will take up the charge to be great Americans. It really is time to stand up and say enough. Thank you very much. Thank you.